Yeah. <clears throat> Again, um, make yourself comfortable. Straight off your back. And try to let go of any tensions that there is on your body, on your mind. Just try to be relaxed. Natural. And Try to feel the, the weight of your body on cushion, chair, and the surrounding. If possible, Try to let go of all the thoughts, all the feelings, thoughts, thought of past, future. Then settle down your mind. And we can do that by focusing your attention to the breath or the sensations of the breath on nostril as you breathe in and out. naturally.
with the introspection mind. Check whether your mind is still focused on breath or not. If you notice your mind is wandering, distracted, notice that. Be aware of that. Slowly, gently, try to bring your attention or the focus back to the breath. while trying to keep your attention to the breath if you hear any sounds have any sensations feelings any thoughts arises Notice them. Be aware of them. Observe them. Without entertaining those thoughts in a detached way. Let them arise if it arises. Let them disappear if it disappears. Whatever happens, let it be without any judgmental thoughts. Just notice, observe, and let it go.
then try to contemplate and feel how lucky and fortunate that I am to have this precious human life. which has incredible potential. How fortunate and lucky we are, if nothing else, to be, to have this human life, to be healthy. And to be alive. just like it has happened to so many other beings. Life could come to end anywhere in the world, anytime, in any form, to anyone. We are extremely fortunate, still alive, so we can solve the unsolved conflict problems in our life. giving us the time and opportunity to grow up ourselves to transform ourselves to improve ourselves so that we can be more kind, more gentle, more caring to oneself and to others. Therefore, the purpose of my life, or meaning of my life, <coughs> is to be able to be most, as much as beneficial, helpful, to be able to contribute in whatever way we can. in reducing the suffering and cause of suffering of all sentient beings. And to be able to be health, beneficial, contributing 
in improving the life and happiness of all sentient beings as much as we can. To be able to do that in most effective, in most skillful, in most beneficial way, without the limitations. I must actualize my full potential, the fully awakened state, the fully enlightened state. and to be able to actualize that state. I must cultivate and fully develop <coughs> loving kindness, compassion, and wisdom. And for, to be able to do that, I must reflect, contemplate, meditate, practice. Correctly, continuously. And for that, Happy to be reminded of those practices. By listening to the teachings, reading, engaging discussions, reflection, contemplations, over and over. For that very purpose, <coughs> I'm going to listen, engage in discussion, reflection, contemplations. I'm going to try my best throughout my life, especially this year, this month, this week, especially these 24 hours, to be as much as compassion, kind, caring, and be beneficial to oneself and others as much as I can. At least minimum, I will try all my best not to engage in any thoughts, any words or act which brings pain and harm to others and oneself. So, 
Sange cha dan so ge cho nam la chan ju pa tu da ne kya su da ge che che ge pe so nam ge do la penje sange du ba Sange cha dan so ge cho nam la chan ju pa tu da ne kya su da ge che che ge pe so nam ge do la penje sange du ba I would like to start with a quotation from uh, Dalai Lama, where he said the key to the creating a better and more peaceful world is the development of love and compassion for others. So again, um, we discussed yesterday and also today on that so important how so important is to cultivate and develop loving kindness and compassion for the betterness, for the more stab stability, for more peace, more harmony in the world. Without sense of loving kindness, compassion, we are going to destroy others as well as ourselves as well as the world, the planet we live in. When anger and hatred rules our minds, there can only be distractions. On the other hand, when our minds is ruled by loving kindness and compassion. Then there is constructive, no distractions. There is health and benefit instead of harm. There will be more peace instead of pain. There will be more harmony instead of disharmony. There will be better understanding and tolerance with each other than distrust with each other. There will be more sense of trust and confidence in each other than sense of distrust and fear. So therefore, loving kindness, compassion is so crucial, so important. And as I <laughs> On individual level, as I mentioned yesterday, so important to heal ourselves and transform ourselves from, 
from being under the pain and suffering and misery of anger, hatred, resentment, grudges, all negative thoughts, all other negative feelings, emotions that come out of that, those thoughts. Hmm? So, <coughs> so yesterday we discussed uh, this awakening mind of bodhicitta, which is the highest form of uh, loving kindness and compassion. Mm -hmm. In order to cultivate and fully develop that awakened mind. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, there are uh, more classical true method and then um, another method um, combining those two methods. And first maybe uh, I'm going to discuss about the, by following the method of what you call the Mahayana seven point of cause and effect. So in that meditations, in that practice, contemplations, we follow um, six steps as a cause and the seven stages is the result by following and practicing those uh, six stages then uh, you are able to develop the awakened mind of that bodhicitta. So first six are cause and the seven is result. So that is why we call Mayana seven point of cause and effect. So it start with, maybe just to go through first. First is recognizing and understanding that all sentient beings have been our most kind, caring mothers. Second is contemplating on the kindness of mother sentient beings. Third is by contemplating kindness of them, then generating and cultivating a sense of wanting to repay the kindness. Mm. And through that, with a sense of cultivating a, a strong wish, um, thoughts to repair the kindness, then cultivating a sense of loving kindness. wishing them to have happiness, cause of happiness or the goodness, and a willingness to lead them to that happy state. And then the compassions. Mm. by reflecting, contemplating, and connecting 
with the pain and sufferings of others as well as oneself. And with that understanding, that connections, um, cultivating a strong feelings, desire, intention, motivations, to free them from that pain, that suffering, and cause of suffering, and willingness to do that. And at the sixth, what we call universal responsibility, or sometimes it is translated as special attitude, laksam. Not only you wish and want them to see in happy state and free from suffering and cause of suffering and pain, that taking the responsibility on yourself to do that yourself, not kind of wishing someone else to do for them, but as you're taking responsibility yourself to do yourself. And so on the basis of that special attitude, then, of course, um, um, the seventh, um, the awakening mind of Bodhicitta, uh, the wish to actualize our full potential, fully enlightened state, fully awakened state, so that we can be most beneficial, most helpful in helping, guiding, sentient beings to free from the suffering and cause of suffering and lead them to happiness and cause of happiness or fully enlightened state. So that is like the, the stages. So in uh, Buddhist scriptures you find this expression, mother sentient being very often all the time. All sentient beings, we often see mother sentient being, mother sentient beings. Um, mm. So in order to kind of have to have this, the first stage, to be able to kind of recognize and feel that uh, all, sentient my, all sentient beings have been our kind mother. There's a little bit of complications. <laughs> <laughs> We need to have some um, understanding of, in order to have that understanding, we need to have understanding of many lifetimes. That there is many lives, and with each form of life we take, we always have mothers, parents, and so, they have, even though they might not have been mother in this life, they have been mothers in one of other, other in the past life. They will continue to be in mothers in the future lives. Not only each of us has been mothers, each of us has been mothers many times. So that kind of understanding, realizations, then I think definitely we need to have some understanding of many lifetime, which is a little bit complicating. Mm. <clears throat> For some people. From Buddhist point of view, 
we believe our mind, our consciousness is not exactly the same as our brain or physical body, matter, even though there is strong connections between our mind consciousness with our body, with our brain, very strongly related, strong connections. But the mind itself, the consciousness itself, is not the brain itself. Neither is the function of brain itself. Neither is the wave of the brain itself, even though there is a lot of connections. The mind itself, the consciousness itself is non-physical, non-matter. It is pure awareness. Mm. It has um, uh, it has the nature of clarity, awareness, and the object to a kind of reflect to the mind, to the consciousness, and the consciousness to be able to know the mind, uh, know the, the object. And so in a lot of, um, in a lot of, um, writing, Buddhist writing, the compare the mind as like the mirror. It has the ability to reflect whatever objects appear to that. It has that the ability to reflect the objects and to know the objects. Sometimes it is also described the mind like a spacious, like the blue sky. Mm. So that being the case, and of course to, to, to be able to understand that, that matter better, probably we have to look in our own mind, our own consciousness, our own awareness, and try to understand whether it's just pure awareness, pure not something, it doesn't have shape, colors, size, and it has the ability to go beyond the ordinary matters. This wall cannot obstruct your mind from being able to kind of look beyond this wall. You can close your eyes still with your mind. You will be able to reflect, able to know things here outside of here. So it is not limited. The ability of our mind is not limited by physical matters, abstractions. So therefore, the mind itself is much more um, much more than physical matter. If it's physical matter, there's limitations. No matter how 
subtle that energy is. Even the most subtle energy, there is limitation to that. As long as it's physical form, physical matter. But the mind being non-physical, there is the power of mind is limitless. The power of mind is limitless. The more subtle it gets, the more powerful it is. As we find with um, the physical matters. And so when it is non-physical, non-matter, then of course it becomes it's been much more powerful, um, limitless. So again, um, not just from theoretical point of view, in order to understand it with your own experience directly, we should meditate, look in your own mind, your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own awareness, and trying to understand what that phenomena is. And then each of those different thoughts, different feelings, different perceptions, different emotions that we have is kind of preceded by a previous moment, one thought leading to the next thought, that thought leading to the next moment of the thoughts, one perceptions, the previous perceptions lead to my present perception, my present perceptions lead to the, my next moment of perceptions, there's continuity of that. It's preceded by something and it follows. Same with our emotions, our different emotions, our different feelings. A lot of those feelings, a lot of those um, emotions is preceded by previous feelings, emotions. Some of them are quite obvious, we can recognize it very clearly. Some of them is much more subtle way. Sometimes it might be difficult for us to be aware immediately unless we are able to go more subtle level, deeper level. Sometimes you have certain emotions, certain feelings, and you don't know where it comes from. But it is coming from something which may be on subconscious level. Something much more subtle, which we are, because it's not so Growth, we are unable to be aware of that, but um, proceeding from some others. Mm. Again, to 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 understand that, again, we have to look in our own those thoughts, emotions deeply, deeply, profoundly, to see the continuity of how each of those different emotions, thoughts, continue from one to another, and each of them lead by another previously preceding ones. So if that is the case, you can go back. If you see some of your present thoughts, now, you can trace back the continuity of that couple of minutes ago, half hour ago, one hour ago. There's some continuity of that thoughts. And you can trace back to whether that thought comes, that feeling, emotions, from yesterday to the next last week, last month, last year or this year, last year. 
and those coming from when you are adult, those coming from when you are teenager, going back when you are child, going back further when you were just born, and still when you are born, you still have those, many of those thoughts, many of feelings, many of emotions, many of those perceptions. Again, where does that come from? If our present perception, thoughts, feelings come from previous moment of those, is preceded by preceding moments, then of course also at that child who has just been born, who have all this, it also must have some preceding thoughts, emotions, perceptions, whatever feeling they might be going through. It can't be that they started to form from nowhere. Then you go back then the child who is mother's womb. Those preceding from that. The child who is mother womb still has some feelings, some thoughts, some emotions, some perceptions. Where does that come from? It must have preceding moments, just like all the rest of our feelings, thoughts. It must come from previous moments. So then you go back, the first moment of conceptions, conceptions in the mother's womb, where does that come from? And that come from the previous. So that is how in Buddhism, that is how the um, kind of that is the process of understanding this phenomena, that the continuity of our minds, uh, the continuity of our consciousness, where it comes from previous continuity and it continued and it follows. So. When we die, our body ceases, but our consciousness and mind continue to, uh, the continuity of that follows. So on the basis of that, so then when the mind, the consciousness follow, then it takes a new form of life, new body. And again, um, So because of that, so from Buddhist point of view, there is previous life. And so therefore, in previous life, again, you have parent. Again, that one where it comes previous, previous, previous. So, it, so therefore, from that perspective, then we cannot deny and say that no, anyone has not become your mothers. So everyone has become your mothers. So recognizing that. That is the first point. If for some reasons, some people find, okay, maybe, yeah. So not only everyone has been our mother, everyone has been our father, most caring father, everyone has been our grandparent, everyone has been our brothers, our sisters, our best friends. But among all them, the mother is kind of the highest form of showing the love and compassion, care, 
in general speaking for some individual that might not have been case or they didn't feel that way but in general speaking even with the animal if you observe it you can see that part mother is the one who cared the child the father seems to be kind of more providing the provider and mother seems to be more caring the fathers go and find the food and like that but it, it seems to be the mother who is constantly with the child until they grow up fully and where they can start to go by themselves teaching them how to even an animal you, you observe you see that part even in human that is where is the mother who take care of the child in her womb for nine months is not the father and it is the mother who give the birth in terms of actual birth itself so from that perspective you can see um so therefore um we use this uh mother sentient beings The second point is then once you have first you recognize all sentient beings of your mother not only mother many times and then second point is that is the first point second point is reflecting contemplating on the kindness of mother the willingness of the mother to go through those difficult nine periods of the month that is compassion even though they know that it will be not easy especially the later part of your pregnancy that there is going to be a lot of um uh, challenges there is willingness willingness to go through that hardship because of the kindness caring for that child in the womb the me- oh, most of the mothers unless they are not aware and not ignorance of something if they are aware and they know they try all the best not to eat anything not to do anything which might harm the baby so that baby there is healthy baby even the food that they enjoy they are willing to sacrifice those food if they know that it might be harmful for the child certain things certain things they enjoy doing certain exercise certain way of doing things even uh, personally they enjoy it doing is personal but they are willing to give up that pers- their own personal enjoyment happiness pleasure so that it doesn't harm the baby Mm. and then you can see you know uh, the joy the happiness 
when the baby is the birth given. Of course, there could be one or two exceptional cases when they are not prepared, they are not ready, and by accident something happens in some cases that in those cases they might not have they might have slightly different feelings but in general when they are ready when they are ready to have child from their side there's incredible joyness that you can see in their face when they are able to deliver the give the birth to the baby And then the care that the mother's parent, especially the mothers that they go through in upbringing, normally, if we don't get enough sleep, or if we don't have time for enough sleep, we complain we get agitated, upset, that I couldn't. But when you are taking care of the baby, <coughs> you are willing to get in the middle of the night to be with the baby. You are willing to sacrifice your own sleep. Mm. Especially when we are young, if the parent doesn't make, uh, give enough attention, if they are not alert and if they are intentions, we are so vulnerable because we don't know anything. You might easily kind of fall because you don't know what is age, you keep crawling, you might fall, you might put your hand in the fire, candles, burn yourself, you can start eating rocks, swallow it, you could choke it, you might play with a knife without knowing it. I mean there is so much we are so fragile in that of harming ourselves if they don't pay attention. So they are constantly, they have to watch you, constantly pay attention so that you don't do something which harms. Incredible amount of attention, care that you give, especially at the younger age when we couldn't differentiate all these things. And without the parents' care at that time, unlike like the animals, many animals, from the moment they birth, they seem to walk, able to walk, able to manage themselves to some extent, even though they need to be under the care of the mother, parent, but they seem to be much more kind of able to do with a human we don't know how to walk we don't know how to eat we don't know so all this incredible hardship that they go through and they are willing to go through all this hardship because of their love compassion sense of care. Not only that, their willingness, there is joy in doing that. There is joy in doing that. Why? Because there is love, compassion, care. Unfortunately, the the unfortunate part is that 
as we grow up, we forget all these things. <laughs> we hardly remember any of those things. If we remember, we remember if they have scolded us. Probably we never forget that. <laughs> if they have been a little bit harsh on us, probably we remember that. It's hard to not to forget it's hard to forget that. But all the kind care that they have given. The reason why we are still alive, the reason we, why we are still here, is because of their care. Without their care, we would not be here at the moment, because we don't have capacity to be on our own without their care. We are still alive, we are here, who we are, that means they have taken care of when we are most vulnerable that time. Mm. And the willingness in some cases, the willingness, with, without any hesitations, the willingness to exchange the pain and suffering of the child for him or herself. If the child is going through some sickness or some difficult, they are sincerely feeling willingness, love, compassion, if I could take that on myself, that's so the child doesn't have to go through that. If there is any possibility of doing that, there's no doubt they will do that, in terms of that. There's that kind of... And you see even in animals, you know, the mothers sacrificing their own life to protect the child. Some of the birds, when the snake, hawk, or some other animals, when they try to eat the baby birds, the mothers, even they are very tiny and very, they don't try to escape, they try to fight. In some cases, they lose their life, but they are, they are not willing to give up. They try all their best according to their capacity to protect the baby. I saw there was a one... Uh, um, I saw um, a, a, a video someone has posted of a rabbit trying to fight with the a, a rabbit mothers trying to fight with a snake, and I, the mother was gone to search for food or something, and the snake came and has kind of eating one of the baby and trying to kind of eat the second baby and it just come and just rush and of course the rabbit doesn't have any kind of much kind of weapon or any force so the way she runs very forcefully bang to the and snake kind of what do you call get shock kind of shock or something <laughs> and it started to go, and the rabbit doesn't allow, you know, it's keep on chasing, chasing, 
trying to bite and, and trying all the things that she could. Such a kind of um, yeah. And I remember at one time in the monastery, um, I don't know what kind of um, bird it is, that one of the small birds had made a nest just by the door. And not only by the door, it's not high, it's just where you can... And after she laid down the baby, and of course she was trying to um, protect the baby. And when you move in out from the door, she looks very suspicious. If you will look, you know. <laughs> but she is not willing to kind of fly away, even though she doesn't know whether anyone who is passing through might kind of harm. But she doesn't want to leave the baby and fly away. So, before she had a baby, she will just fly away. But once she has a baby, she's not willing to fly away. She just sit there, even though just kind of a little bit suspicious and scary and fearful. And one day the baby has fall down, you know. And by that time she was able to, the baby was able to kind of um, walk a little bit. And I tried to grab and put in that, but the ones I, I, I didn't really hold it. The moment I was trying to, the mother came and see. And it was tiny and she was trying to do everything to distract or trying to bite or whatever. Maybe she was scared that I might harm her or whatever, you know. So she was trying all her best, everything, to kind of scare you away, to protect that baby. So it is just just a very um, examples of what the mother is willing to go through for the for the baby for the child, and absolutely, absolutely. Um, similar case in human beings too, human mothers. All the incredible hardships, difficulties that they are willing to go through without any sense of complaint. What make them to do is because of their love, compassion, and care. If they don't have that love, compassion, kindness, care, we wouldn't be able to do even one small part of that, what they go through. Mm. And I mean, you, you can see uh, your um, mother's parents, a lot of time the parent get in the fight because of the child. They go in argument, conflict, fight, not for, because of their lot of time because of the child. And I, I, of course, um, I have my own experience in my family. I remember when I was young, my parents fighting, even to some, some level, even on physical level. <laughs> because we were being too naughty, including myself. And mothers being mothers, they all pamper you, 
all the time, try to protect you. And normally father is a little bit tough. They want more discipline. So father wanted, father wanted to bring that discipline because you, you are becoming too wild. And so when the father tried to discipline you, your mother doesn't agree with that way of disciplining. And they started to quarrel, argue. Father saying, you, because of your, that kind of doing that you spoil them, and that is why they become wild. <laughs> and of course, mother being protective all the time, she's protect you. And, and one time I remember they were physically getting into fight. It was because of me at that time. Yeah. And like most mothers, sometimes they are too protective. And and again, my mother has that kind of um, Again, it just show their love, care, compassions. They don't worry about themselves. They worry more about the child than themselves. Uh, even when you are 90, still you are a child for them. <laughs> Every time I travel, my mom started to get worried. <laughs> she will say, do you have any, any friend traveling with you? Are you just traveling? And is anyone taking care of you in the United States? What happens if you get sick? Uh, even I explain to her that she doesn't need to worry, there is more care and all these things. Still, there is so much concern so much concern and that concern and uh, yeah the worry and so on so that that just show um, never ending the kindness of the mother they will prefer to go empty stomach themselves, then see their child suffering because of the hunger. Hmm? So yeah, maybe we will have a short break. Yeah, maybe 20 minutes, 20, 20, 25, yeah. Sometime I think <coughs> As I was saying that we don't remember, it's hard to ask to remember, and especially a lot of the care that we really got was when much so small that it's hard for us to remember them, isn't it? <clears throat> because we don't have much memory of when you are one, two, 
our memory are much more of later part. <clears throat> but I think if you, if we observe every any parent, any mothers who are taking care of their children, we can ha we can have some. We can feel and we can get some idea, even though we don't remember um, the kindness that uh, that our mother went through, especially when very very young, and when we really need it. Mm. It seems the whole perspective and life change once you have children. Your life, your life is centered around the children, around the, ch the child instead of it's centered around you. Before it, your life, your world is centered around you. It is all about me, my needs, my happiness, uh, my problem, whatever that is. That seems to shift once you have a child. It's centered more around the child than yourself. It's more about the child's needs then my needs, it becomes more about child happiness than my happiness. It, it, normally, it's very hard for us to shift that, to shift from your own happiness to someone's happiness. To shift being centered around you than to center around someone's. But when you have child, that seems to change quite easily, naturally, without kind of kind of putting effort to happen that. You don't really put effort that I want to kind of shift my life perspective or be around. It's just kind of quite natural, isn't it? It's, it, it's just become quite natural process in that, the, shift, the shifting of that. And that shift comes because of, again, your kindness, love, compassion for the child. Normally in our life, it's very hard to let it go of being so concerned with our own happiness. But somehow when you have child, you are able to kind of do it. And again, that is because of your incredible mother's love and compassion for the child. Before it's all about finding time for your own enjoyment, your own pleasure and that, that shifts now it is more about what is for the child. Constantly your, your schedule, all things making more for the child. As we grow, again, we forget all these things, unfortunately. So, we have to consciously reflect, contemplate, meditate. 
And we are not trying to, through that meditation, contemplation, we are not trying to fabricate something which is. We are just trying to revisit what happened and how they care us and be in touch with that reality. At the moment, we are not in touch with that reality. Totally, it, it seems as though nothing has happened. That kind of reality was nothing happened. What happened was our con contemplations, our conflict, And again, as I said yesterday, is 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 our human mind. Someone explaining more from kind of from evolution point of view, um, the survival point of view, where somehow we are able to remember the negative more easily. In the positive, we don't remember easily unless we consciously try to contemplate, think about that. Someone might have said us, truly from their heart, I love you or I care you or thank you a thousand times. And one day he or she lose their mind and he might have said, I hate you or I don't care or what, something like that. And all we remember that word, that place in our mind again and again, again and again, days, weeks, months, years. But thousand times they said that one doesn't play anymore. It's strange, but that is that's a reality, isn't it? That is how our mind works. So with that we can see a lot of time we have conflict with our parent. And sometimes it's um, uh, sometime it hard to let it go. Because what we remember is some of the things which they might not have been as skillful Maybe a certain time they might have lost their mind, just like ourselves. <clears throat> Out of that anger, they might have done something, they have, might have said something. And that is so strong in our mind. We only think and remember that. Out of compassion, out of love, which they sacrifice so much their time, their energy, um, their happiness, everything over so many years, we totally forget them, totally, as those things have never happened. So this meditation practice on Contemplate on kindness of mothers or kindness of fathers, kindness of parents or others is to kind of reconnect with that reality as well. So our mind is not being biased discriminating, one-sided. Even supposedly your parents, your mothers have not been so kind in certain stage in your life. But that is only one part. You didn't, we didn't reflect, contemplate the whole part So therefore, our mind is being very, um, kind of being, in that case, our mind is being um, blinded. <clears throat> 
bias, narrow, we didn't see the totality of the, the situations, unable to see it. It's important to connect with that because if we can connect with that, maybe we can also connect with ourselves. That can be kind of opening for ourselves by being able to feel that way, by being able to connect in that way, by being able to feel the kindness, the love, compassion, care from such young, uh, in such a young age, especially when we need it. That kind, kind of enhance our own feelings and to be able to also feel more loving compassion for ourselves and to others as well. And sometimes I wonder, you know, uh, sometimes some people have uh, issue with loving themselves, having being kind to themselves, um, not having enough compassion for themselves. Um, And maybe because they felt they didn't receive compassion, caring, love, and kindness from others. Sometimes they cannot see that part. So when we uh, meditate, reflect on that, maybe you are able to see that, feel that more. As you see that, as you understand that more, as you feel that more, then slowly, um, you begin to also have more loving, compassion, care for yourself and to others. So it is, 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 um, it depends on how we focus our mind on what, you know. At the moment we focus our mind on too much on the negative side, not the positive side. Mm. It depends so much on how you focus on. I, I, honestly, in my case, I don't feel my parent has been aggressive, abusive. Never felt that way. But it doesn't mean in sometime that my father didn't lose his mind or sometime that when we are too wild that he, he wanted to bring some stability, some discipline and that. But I always see and find it's a way of compassion, of helping, guiding you in the right directions. Mm. So again, um, um, so is how you direct your mind. Mm. So anyway, um, (laughs) 
Still, if we find difficult to see your mother being kind, there must be someone in your life where you can connect, where you feel kind of loved, care. So, whether it might be father, whether it might be your grandparent, whether it might be your uncle, auntie, friends, whoever, there must be someone in our life where um, you feel that kindness, that care, that loving kindness, compassion. Um, so if you have anyone that, then it is the same. You can apply same. All of us, all the other sentient beings have been same, loving, compassion, just like that person. Not only t one time, many times. So even you can't see everything as most kind mother, you can see everyone as most kind father. Or you can see everyone as most kind, caring grandpa grandparent. Or uh, if you relate more with your uncle, auntie, you can see everyone as being most caring uncle, auntie, or friend, whom you were usually. So that is the point, you know. You, you think of someone who has been so kind, caring in your life, and you apply that to everyone. Everyone has been like that in your life, in previous life, many times in that way. In that way, you connect. You connect and feel with each other in that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 sometimes it's very hard to understand. In the modern world, the way the children feel with their parents and the way they kind of interact with it. Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to understand why there is so much anger, hatred, all those negative feelings. And I will, it, it always want, it always kind of um, make me wonder why, and I haven't found any kind of answer to it, but that seems to be quite a lot of cases for a lot of people. In some cases, maybe definitely there might be a much more bigger pictures, but in some cases, It is a, yeah, things happen in your life and not being able to let it go. And just dwelling in that negative thought all your life. I don't even remember my, but my mom says, when I was young, I was the worst kind of uh, child in terms of following her all the time. She had five sons. Poor mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I don't remember myself very well, but my mom said I was the one who kind of tried to follow her, you know, uh, most. And because sometimes my father is there, sometimes my father is not there, because he go to other places for earning for months and months. And so it was my mom who had to take care of the five children, take care of the, all the animals, take care of the farm. Um, taking, getting the woods to make fires, um, all she has to do. And there was no helper. And, and he, she has the five children. And sometimes when she goes, when she needs to go to the farm or some forest to pick up woods or something, so me following doesn't help. <laughs> So she said she had to tie me up <laughs> on my leg and tie it up there in, in the house. <laughs> yeah. And th yeah, there are a few stories which I myself cannot remember very clearly, but my mom said, I almost died a couple of times in the winter trying to follow her and got frozen, almost frozen. She didn't know I was following her because, of course, if she saw me, probably she would scold or kind of slap or take it to the house. So I was following her where it's far enough me to see her <laughs> where she doesn't see me, <laughs> keeping that distance. And it seems suddenly I lost her. And so, fortunately, someone, a uh, neighbor found me and they took me into uh, their house and keep warm and by the fire and like that. So, um, so there, there seems to be a couple of <laughs> instances like that. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, what, what I'm, I'm trying to say is things happen in our life. And despite uh, your mom's love, compassion, care, sometimes they are handicapped, limited in certain way. And due to those limitations, maybe they are unable to give everything they want to give us. And sometimes we, our mind hang out in that, that they didn't give this, this and that. Do you get it what I mean? Yeah. They have given so much, but maybe there are some area where they would like to give much more than they have been able to give it, but they have limitations. In whatever limitation that is due to whatever limitation, whether it is external resources, whether it is time, whether it is a limitation in how many hands she has. So therefore she is unable to um, be there all the time in that cases. And because she was unable to be there all the time, then as a consequence, sometimes uh, you happen in that kind of situations. But kind of to blame your mother for that and kind of st stuck your mind in that situations and totally forget everything that she or he has done 
doesn't seem fair. Doesn't seem fair. Not true to reality. Seems a little bit bias. Is being bias. Mm. So, and I think the way to do the way to change is again contemplate on the their kindness, their help, whatever they have done, because that is our mind doesn't dwell into that automatically. Okay, our mind automatically dwell into the any any. I don't know uh, exact. Uh, I can't find the exact word that I, I'm trying to express it. Um, but our mind dwell automatically in a sense due to whatever limitations that they are unable to fulfill your needs. And we are not automatically, our mind is not automatically geared in a such way to be able to dwell in the good things that they have done, the loving compassion and help that they have done. So therefore, consciously we have to reflect, contemplate, meditate on that. So our mind is more balanced. So our mind is more balanced. At the moment, our mind is not balanced. Not only you remember that any any kind of unkind they might have done, or you feel that they have done, or any kind of um, things that you feel they have not been able to fulfill your uh, your wishes and so. On. Not only just that, but also to be able to see other things that which they have done too. And in that way, your mind is more unbiased, more undiscriminating, more fully, more balanced. And when you see that, then you don't need to be so agitated and so angry about certain issues, certain things. So that is the second, uh, second, um, second uh, stages. Um, remember the kindness of the mothers. Then, having remembered the ki- uh, remember the kindness of mother, then cultivating, generating a sense of wish, thought of wanting to repay the kindness. In most cases, when you have that second strong feeling of kindness, that will come quite naturally. When you feel kindness of someone, compassion of someone, sense of closeness, dearness, care of someone, wanting to repay back kindness come quite naturally. When they are in needs, naturally you want to kind of help in whatever you can do. But at the moment, it, it, it doesn't come naturally, so we train ourselves consciously again, trying to develop that sense of wanting to repay the kindness. And of course, 
so many different ways of repaying the kindness. Whatever the immediate needs are, trying to help to fulfill those immediate needs. Whatever immediate problems, pain, suffering that they are going through, trying to help them to overcome those problems, pain, sufferings, difficulties, reducing those pain, problems, suffering, difficulties as much as we can, trying to fulfill their immediate needs, whatever those needs are. Someone sick, trying to help them to um, overcome that sickness um, so they can be totally cured, find better health. Someone who is in need of um, moral help, um, trying to be moral help, be there. Um, someone who is needing um, other resources and when we have to be able to help with that and kind of fulfill their immediate needs and so forth. That is one way of repaying the kindness. But it's still kind of um, not the not the most um, beneficial way of repaying the kindness. Of course, that is one way of repaying the kindness. If we don't kind of help them to overcome their own unskillful actions, unhealthy actions, and their own delusions, again, they will continue to make same mistake and they continue to again experience the suffering, pain, and again, it's kind of never ending. So the best way to pay the kindness go beyond that, not only to be able to help to fulfill their immediate kind of needs and help them to overcome their immediate problems, but to be able to help in whatever way we can to change, to transform themselves, to transform their unhealthy actions into more healthy actions, unskillful actions into skillful actions, unwholesome action into the wholesome actions, to be able to help them to um, transform their thoughts, their emotions, their mind to reduce and gradually overcome those afflictive emotions, those destructive emotions as much as possible. And to help them to, in whatever way, to overcome their obstacles, all the subtle obscurations, obstacles for them to become um, achieve their own p full potential, fully enlightened, fully awakened state. Helping, contributing, um, being beneficial in helping them to develop those positive state of minds, such as true love, compassion, wisdom, tolerance, so forth, which are the source of their inner peace, happiness, which are the source of immediate and long-term happiness and joy. Helping them to find true lasting happiness of total freedom from all those afflictive emotions, those delusions, and to achieve, again, the highest level of their potential, fully enlightened, fully. In so that is the kind of um, 
if we can repay through that, then that is the best way of repaying the kindness, the most perfect way of repaying the kindness, the most beneficial way of repaying the kindness. So cultivating that kind of way of thinking that feeling of sense I want to repair kindness, not only to overcome immediate problems and fulfill their immediate needs, but to be able to also help them to overcome the very cause of those problems. And uh, not only immediate short-term um, happiness, joy, but long-term, lasting happiness, joy. Mm. So at the moment, we have to kind of consciously develop that by thinking, reflecting, contemplating again and again until it becomes very uh, natural, spontaneous. Mm. So I think um, maybe we can do a uh, very short um, meditations exercise. Then again, um, straight your back. Make yourself comfortable. Settle down your mind. by <clears throat> keeping your attention on the breath. Then you can generate a good intention by thinking about this practice meditations be cause and condition and beneficial in understanding my own nature of the mind.
also through correct understanding of nature of my mind so that I can learn how to deal with it better. Again, while you try to inhale, exhale naturally, try to keep your awareness to that breath. Now, instead of focusing on the bread itself, try to be focused on the awareness that which is aware of the bread. and notice and see whether you can feel experience. That awareness is pure, just experience and awareness. which is able to observe the bread, the object of the observations. The awareness as the nature of observing the objects, knowing the object. And the object or the nature of clarity while you are observing, knowing the object. Now expand your object observations without opening your eyes, without moving around. (laughs) 
Try to bring those objects in your mind. That is within this environment. The sound you hear, the smell that you can smell, any sensation of the taste that you feel in your mouth, tongue. any physical bodily sensations, feeling. Those mind consciousness feeling has a nature, notice that they have the nature of simply just reflecting the objects, observing the object. Experiencing the feeling. There is no shape, size, color to those awareness, feeling, experiences, the mind. It has the quality to simply know the objects or the reflect the objects. Experience the object. Then you can think beyond this immediate environment. Think about the outside of this house. Think 
thinking about the the world things happening in the world in whatever feeling that arises from those thoughts simply just observe be aware and observe those thoughts and feeling and notice those feelings those thoughts those mind has the nature of knowing the object reflecting the object whatever that object is observing the object and experience the object and notice that such feelings thoughts is not limited by any physical matters object there does there is notice that there is no limitations by any physical objects or matter in how 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 much we can think how much we can feel how far we can think how far we can feel also notice that such feelings thoughts our mind is all pervasive
is not limited to any specific physical locations. It's like the space, spacious and all pervading. Just like space is not combined, combined by any physical locations. Notice, just like a blue sky, spacious, there is some clarity in that mind. Nature of knowing the objects and clarity. I can gently bring back your awareness, back to the breath. then we can dedicate the whatever goodness, positive energy virtues that we might have created for the peace and happiness of oneself and all sentient beings. for one side and all others to have much more deeper, profound understanding of our own emotions, our own mind, thoughts. Then you can Slowly open your eyes and move your body. So this is a small short exercise to kind of observe and look our own awareness, thought, feelings, perceptions, which are part of our mind, uh, and to understand the nature of the mind itself, uh, to see how it is very different from the physical, physical world, physical matters. Mm. 
mm, how it is not con con combine what do you call it? combine combined 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 yeah confined by something like physical matters is kind of all pervading um, so anyway um, yeah is 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 to kind of even we don't understand at least we try to have some kind of started to have some kind of curiosity um, what do you call curiosity like curiosity whether actually our minds are different from the brain itself the way the brain functions the way our mind functions mm. <coughs> mm. So, it, yeah, I think maybe I can take one or two questions before we stop for the lunch. And any any questions from yesterday, today? Yes, please. How, um, how does the memory function? I mean, how... Uh, because if you if you go back and back and back, and they say when 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 we develop like when somebody becomes a Buddha, they remember everything. But am I mean? If it's just yeah, kind of. <laughs> how does it work? Of course. Uh, in uh, in our case, a lot of time um, there is memory, but it is not only the memory which is functioning. At the present moment, our mind is functioning. Of course, we have memory of something in the past, but in the present, we have our mind able to function without going to the me relying on the memory, able to. See with our consciousness to be able to hear with our ear, um, smell, taste, f feel the physical, and to be able to um, mentally know something, uh, to expand, uh, and so. So it is a very m memory is part of the mind, but mind is not just the memory. So it's only one part of the mind. But I don't know exactly what your question was, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, we have the continuity of mind uh -huh. from one moment to the next, blah, blah, blah. And Did I say blah, blah, blah? No, no, <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. When we get more clear, we're going to remember so many things. Mm -hmm. I just wonder where is that hanging around now? <laughs> How can it, where is it stored, kind of? <laughs> well, it's the story is within the mental continuum. In the mental, with the continuity. Within the continuity of the mental, yeah. And is there because our our mind, our atten um, attention, our awareness is not so powerful and clear that we can, that as we develop our attention, our awareness uh, become more stronger, more precise, then we can remember more. We are able to kind of have more access to the, those memories. Um, at the moment, we are unable to access because our 
awareness, our attentions, uh, the clarity of our mind is not strong and precise. <coughs> is it the clashes that take up all the place now then? Show you that. The clashes, the, the, the afflictions that are blocking everything? Not necessarily just by the delusions. Um, Something like maybe some kind of like uh, dullness, um, doziness or laxity, whatever we call it. those parts definitely play some roles that doesn't allow our mind to be as clear as it can be, um, as attentive as it can be, um, as focused as it can be. Um, so when so therefore, from th from that perspective, definitely there is um, maybe uh, there is some obstacles from created by that kind of unclarity mind, such as um, dullness and so on. Mm. But it's not like the kind of your anger or attachment kind of blocking that memory, not necessarily in that way. Um, yeah. Someone can have incredible memory, at the same time, they can have full of all those delusions. Someone might have not such a great memory, but they could have less delusions. Okay, coming one, two, okay, yes, yes. Um, question around uh, self-care and self-compassion. Um, I think the question is that if there is a risk of someone having a burnout of compassion if they don't look after themselves. And I think you gave a great example around family set up where parents give so much to kids in a context of special kids with special needs, for example, or sometimes parents that behave as kids and, and uh, in that scenario. So what's the limit? Um, and, and I think with um, what you touched on, instead of addressing uh, immediate needs, um, helping others to realize their potential, I think that's a great way. But what's the, I think there is a fine line, so how can we distinguish when we are being compassionate and when it's too much compassion and when it's time to back off? And mm -hmm. I think, <coughs> the sense of burnout at the moment, there is some sense of compassion, <clears throat> but most time it's not driven by pure compassion. It's also driven by a lot of time. There's compassion at the same time is strongly driven by compulsories, compulsions, or you feel like compulsions, yeah? You feel compile, com okay. compelled. Yeah. Obligations, obligation compel to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so we have to distinguish those things. Um, and sometimes, definitely, um, if it if it comes out of true unconditional love and compassion, which we enhance or develop through the practices, then I think there is n not, you don't get that sense of burnout like that. Um, but I think there is a little bit of compassion in that. At the same time, we feel obliga obligated, obligations to do things. And that is when burnout comes. Because when you feel obligated, for whatever reasons, compelled to do that, not because you're enjoying doing it, but because there is some kind of um, something which m maybe you think you have to be more compassionate. Do you get it? It's not because of compassion, but you feel you have to be more compassionate. It's very different that I'm out of compassion or saying, pushing myself, I have to be more compassionate these two different things. Yeah. And so, 
so that when that kind of things creep in, then definitely um, we can burn out and we don't f find time for ourselves. We don't um, take care of ourselves. And so there is, but I think when you have true love, compassion, and bodhicitta, um, then I think taking care of others itself becomes taking care of yourself. It's no separate. Actually, um, being able to help others, you see and feel that you are helping yourself. Giving time to others, actually you f see and feel for yourself. Um, so it is a very different experience. At the moment, we feel that separation. separation. You don't feel that kind of same joyness and happiness in yourself and feel that you are doing for yourself. You feel you are doing for them. And you are giving up yourself, your happiness, for their happiness. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So then there is that kind of feeling and sometimes resentment later, uh, resentment for yourself, resentment that person, you feel that all my good days, all my good times were given for there, and I didn't have good time for myself, time for myself. So those resentment comes from like that. But when it's true compassion, you don't have that feelings. It doesn't, you feel that. But at the moment, of course, we, we want to reach that point eventually, but we have not reached that and we shouldn't pretend we are in that stage. That will be the problem. When you are not that state and kind of pretending you are in that state, then you can't handle it. You are trying to be something, someone else. You are idealistic of who you want to be when you are not that at the moment. Delusional. Yeah, it's uh, to some extent it's delusional. And so, therefore, uh, to look in yourself and understand your own state of being at the moment, acknowledging, accepting that this is not my ideal, in, is not, there is some level of love, compassion, but still it needs to be uh, kind of enhanced, developed much more. And with whatever I'm state at, what I'm trying to work on the basis of that. And so, being honest with yourself, your, 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 your own mind, and on the basis of that, um, you're trying to do whatever's best in that. And I think that is where you, you will know um, you are not kind of fooling yourself, pretending yourself in that way. Uh, so I would say that. And so, and in those cases, it's absolutely all right to say no when needed. It doesn't mean you are not less compassionate to be able to say that. Um, of course, it is always complicating when that can be excuse not to extend to others as well. So that is where you have to really know your own state and your mind better. Whether I'm just taking that excuse or am I really that I really need the break. I really need to break my break. I need to, need to take care of myself so that I don't burn out so that instead of taking care of others, others have to take care of myself because I cannot now any whether or Am I just excusing this as a way for me not to extend myself when I could extend a little bit? So that is the way tricky part comes. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have to be, be able to look inside ourselves and be honest and understand. And with that, I think it will have a better wisdom to make the right um, judgment. That's Yes, and that will be the last question for the moment. Yeah, you. Uh, I just wanted to say about the memory thing. I just 
I think I've heard of people, you know, like we were born, obviously, mm -hmm. but we can't remember that. Mm -hmm. But people train themselves to remember that specific. Mm -hmm. like Where? Even a kind of mundane being can train their mind to just remember birth. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think um, when we when we develop the sharpness of our mind, sharpness of our focus, sharpness of our awareness and um, attentions uh, through the practice of kama abiding, uh, samadhi, and so forth. Actually, you can go back each moment and remember very clearly. And you can go back, back, and you can actually go back even before that. At least theoretically, that is possible through that kind of practice. Um, so for s some practitioners, you know, they do that way. They train that way and able to do that. Some people, they are born and they remember Many children remember that. Not only remember, a lot of them has been, um, what do you call them? Um, the children talk about their previous life and when they did research and that is accurate, everything precisely in many of them. and. So it is not just kind of hallucinating or thing, but what they remember, they were able to authenticate. authenticate by reality fact when they really check. And they are like, I think there is one um, person in the United States who, is, who have done that lot of research, and he um, that person who started, he died, and I think, again, they especially in those um, children cases, special children cases like that. And of course, sometimes we have some other lamas also who, who, who remember that. And, um, and many of them, also those uh, research, also many of the, the lamas, they say, as they get old, they seem to, they say they remember less and less about the past. When they are young, they remember more clearly. As they get older, as new information come up, filled with new information, then old information is kind of, kind of be uh, kind of unclear, with new too many new informations, and so they become unclear about that. Um, so that is another thing that one among those research which they have done through those. One of the common things they found is actually among those children who remember is a lot of cases, it is a lot of them, they died at a young age. And a lot of another common factor they found is that they have more kind of tragedy death, unpleasant tragedy death. A lot of those kids which they remember, that is at least common trait they found among them. And if you, if, you, if you kind of reflect, it makes a little bit more sense. Because even in this life, when we have tragedy, memory is more clear, as we have been talking. Something bad happened, uh, we don't easily forget it. It remains in our, in our mind very clearly. Many other information, we easily kind of forget it. And another thing is, in generally speaking, as we get older, our memories also get kind of more and more unclear. When you are young, your memory is much more stronger, clear. In generally speaking, not talking about every individual because they are exceptional, but in general average. So therefore, when someone died young age, somehow they are able to keep that memory more clearly. And especially when they've judged it, it's so strong, they remember so clearly. At least that is the kind of the finding that through some of those, um, uh, that. Um, and I mean, 
when we talk about uh, previous life, is totally different life, and we go through many stages, um, the stages of parto, intermediate, and then nine months in the mother's womb, and then birth. And so it's a long process, and it's hard for us to remember, even a um, lot for most of people, it's very hard to remember much about when they are very young, when they are one or two years, for example. So if it's hard to remember those instant or those memories, it will be more, much more harder to remember the previous life, to remember when you are mother's womb and even go further that for, for ordinary people in general. So, so definitely some can remember naturally because of certain circumstances and for some um, through training, uh, like mind training, like that, um, one can be able to remember that, okay? So we'll have a Changjo Samjo Rainbow